Hello, this is Jay with Web App Zero, and in today's video we're going to install SpaceMax. I'm at spacemax.org. I click on GitHub, and this takes me to the SpaceMax GitHub repo. I scroll down and um, see that they have a quick install section here. We're going to skip over that and jump uh, into uh, two main sections, uh, prerequisites and install. So those are the two that we're going to uh, read through pretty carefully here. And I'm on Mac OS, so I'm going to jump to that section. And there are three commands that I want to follow here. I will use, I'm using iTerm, you can use uh, Terminal, which if you open Spotlight and type in Terminal, that will open up your Terminal program. And everything after the dollar sign here is what I want to copy. If you're new to the command line, I'm going to paste that in. My dollar sign looks like a lightning bolt, that might be a little confusing. Okay, so this command will update uh, my homebrew formula. Uh, you might need to install homebrew, which you can do a search for. Now I'm going to brew install emacs plus. And I have this cached on my system, so it's telling me here that it's already downloaded. This step could take you a considerable amount of time, so do not be surprised. That's normal. And you should see activity as it's downloading. And now, this final step, the link apps, is not working 100%, I don't think, but let's. it gives a warning. Uh, warnings are not quite as serious as errors. Um, providing some information that things aren't going exactly uh, ideal in an ideal way. So we have here, um, it tells us at the, at the end that it, it did link one app to applications. Um, there's an issue with Spotlight not indexing uh, Emacs properly so that it shows up as an app when you uh, open Spotlight. So what I do to work around this, because I'm a big fan of Keyboard Maestro, is I actually have a keyboard shortcut set up, a macro, so that when I issue this particular keyboard shortcut, Emacs opens. And you can use any keyboard shortcut you want, um, and you may not want to install Keyboard Maestro just for this functionality, but it's actually a great program um, if you happen to have a need uh, for it some of its other features. Um, and so we're installing version 25.1 and so it is sort of a hard link that goes right into uh, into Homebrew's directory structure there uh, into emacs.app. And that's just a little tip. I'll, I'll let you uh, decide for yourself if that's the way you want to go. You can read uh, up on the issues for some of the issues behind it indexing spotlight there are other workarounds i just i just completely work around the issue by creating a keyboard shortcut which opens emacs for me and i find that to be an effective workaround um, i'll show you another little script that i use to open files from the command line in emacs uh, in just a minute but first we need to finish up our install and so we're going to come back. You might want to read through the rest of uh, this information here. It's always a good idea to read the documentation. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit, we see there's an install section. That's the section I referred to earlier in the table of contents. And if you already have a, a .emacs.d directory or a .emacs directory, you want to back those up using uh, these two move commands. And next, we want to clone the SpaceMax GitHub repository <coughs> to our home directory, which will either create or overwrite the .emacs.d directory. So we'll do that now. It's pulling down the information from GitHub, and now it's done. 
So at this point, I should see Space Max when I open up Space Max, but there are a couple of notes. I already have the Source Code Pro font installed on my system. This is optional, um, but it looks nice, and so I would recommend following this step number three if, if you don't have that already. And if you have any errors um, in uh, any, any major errors, you can follow step number four. Uh, and then uh, if you get errors, you might need to re restart Emacs to complete the installation. So that's pretty much it. Um, you can also finish reading the documentation from here on. I think it's a good idea to familiarize yourself with. But uh, at this point, we're ready to sort of test Emacs. And so I'll trigger my shortcut to open Emacs. And it looks like it was already open. So I'm going to just see if that was... A legacy instance of it yeah all right so um it was and now it's downloading downloading the packages that i have defined in my dot space max file and which is the configuration file for space max i'm going to pause the video and let uh, these downloads finish and then we'll pick things back up in a minute Okay, and SpaceMax is done installing, so we can look at it real quick. And this is what SpaceMax looks like. I really enjoy using um, this editor. It's actually Emacs with uh, the SpaceMax um, choices built on top of it. So um, it's a, a curated list of packages, and um, not just packages, but a way to manage the packages, which are called layers. And... I'm still learning a lot about it, but I've enjoyed uh, the software and the community quite a bit, and so I just encourage you to take a look at it and see if it's a good fit for you as well, uh, which you're probably interested in if you're watching this video. Uh, so the other thing I want to show you is how I use Space Max, and um, when I say use it, how I might open files from the command line. So I have a script called EC, and so if I look up and see which uh, uh, which EC, what is the path of EC using which EC, it tells me the path. Um, here's what it looks like. I'll surround the command which EC with backticks uh, to replace that command in line and output the contents of the script so that you can see it. You can ignore that last line, but the first three lines there um, basically instruct us to look and see if Emacs is open. If it is, go ahead and use that instance uh, to open uh, the files that we include on the command line. So let's see what that might look like. I have a file f that I'll show you the contents of and I have a file g uh, and that that's what the contents of those files look like so I will use my ec script which is on my path uh, um, and ecf and you can see that it just comes open in emacs I will ec space g and it, I open the file G in Emacs. And so if you're interested in that, I'll just show you that I have a gist online. Um, here is the URL. It's a little bit tricky. Uh, it's got this long UUID looking uh, segment. So we can create a gist. If you'd like to scan this gist with your phone, uh, that will take you to the gist which is sort of a nice way to, to share links inside of videos. Uh, and uh, this is, I'll just give this uh, Chrome extension a shout out, uh, which is um, QR, quick QR code generator exclamation point. So thank, thanks to those folks for creating this nice extension. And you can scan that now or uh, visit mm, visit my gist page on github 
My handle is webapp0, and the name of this file is ec. So that about wraps up uh, this video. I wanted to just thank the makers of Space Max and the wonderful community that's helped me with uh, several problems, uh, little issues that I've had along the way. And uh, it's been just a, a joy, a pleasure and a joy to work with. So I look forward to uh, producing some more videos. If you'd like to see more videos with particular uh, topics, or features covered, um, please let me know. I am just learning uh, many things, but it's a great way to learn is to help others learn as well and to, to share the process of teaching ourselves. So if you've enjoyed this, do please let me know, and I look forward to seeing you around in the community. Thanks a bunch for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye.